The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. Coming to you from some far point station, like a cosmic tumbleweed, both north and south of the Pleiades, here's your host, Gary Anderson. Boy, that thunder. I can tell you what. Here it is up in the harbor down at the compound. A wild summer disappeared today. We had a temperature at 69 degrees. It's going to drop down to about 50 tonight. Almost starting to feel like fall. But I tell you what. They keep saying we're at the hottest ever recorded temperature on Earth. But this summer has been really messy. Not like the past couple years. So it's been more chillier, at least to me. The normal. Wow, what can I say? Well, tonight we got Rob. We're going to be talking about time travel. Hey, do you believe in time travel? I do believe that. The capabilities of mankind, uh, I think uh, we've already been doing it. But maybe I am totally wrong. I also want to welcome a new station. It's in uh, Greenwater, Washington. They're a small community station that decided to start carrying our show as of tomorrow. Uh, I will be putting up their link up on the website here this weekend and along with uh, the other stations that carry my show. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more commercials and then we won't have any commercials for the next hour and a half unless you're listening to one of the commercial stations. We'll be right back. Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at Night Dreams Talk Radio at gmail.com. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com and. Th- you can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at Night Dreams Talk Radio at gmail.com? You're listening to my friend Gary Anderson on Night Dreams Talk Radio, the best in paranormal radio. Now, John, stop saying that. You know it's not true. Yes, we are on the radio. That part is true. No, I'm not the very best talk show host on, uh, well, Internet or or on the radio. Anyway, John, you might uh, remember him from uh, Marty Pathon or whatever it is, uh, uh, and a whole bunch of uh, British sitcoms. He's actually a fan of the show. Anyway, Rob, how you doing, my friend? Hi, how you doing? I'm doing a lot better. I managed to get into the studio, and I'm in the cockpit, ready to go. And so am I, and I'm glad to be back. Well, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, and let's talk about some of the books you had published, and then we can go into my favorite subject. No, it's not sex. Not at my age, and it's not motorcycles, but it's time travel. Well, that's my favorite subject, too. Well, um, I am a writer and also a researcher of the paranormal. I've done a lot on UFOs, been a MUFON field investigator. I have uh, written numerous books, including ones on UFOs, the moon, Mars, as well as uh, two books on time travel and one book on the Mandela Effect. So all told, I have quite a few books out there. (laughs) I'm losing track of them. And um, I am about, this is good news for me, I'm about to head out to L.A. to do um, an on-camera expert series of um, appearances for a new show on the Discovery Channel. Oh, well, can you tell us, or is that mom, you can't say what it is? Now you got my curiosity up. No, they asked me not to, so I can't. 
can't do it yet. But, yeah, I'm leaving on the uh, 21st for several days. And apparently what they do is they do all these scenes of me, and like about two to three minutes long, and then they just store them and put them in the final show wherever they want to put them. I'm sort of like an instant, just to add water, expert. <laughs> you know, I had that happen with a couple of guests. You know, I won't say what particular show it was on, but they, they were rather shocked because, well, whatever they did, what they put in, they said afterwards, that's not what I said. And I said, hey, you know, that's Hollywood. Yeah, and I'm kind of figuring it might go the same way with me, too. I uh, This will be my first time on camera. I've done a lot of radio shows, as you know, but uh, this will be the first time I've been on camera, and I'm expecting that they'll probably pretty much do whatever they want with me. In fact, I have to sign a release saying that they can pretty much do that. Well, it's still going to be interesting no matter what. Oh, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you... uh, I'm a little scared, but other than that, you know, camera shy, but, you know. What are you going to do, right? Well, tell them to use the soft focus lens. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of gauze over it, right? Yeah. <laughs> or better yet, use someone else's face on my body with CGI. That would work, too. Well, we're going to be talking time travel. You know what? I, I'm sitting here going on. Well, I'm getting old. But you know, when I was young, my one of my favorite uh, shows, I couldn't wait to see it on TV. It was made in 1960. And his time travel, you know, that really fancy machine he builds in his parlor. Um, are you talking about the movie or the TV series? The movie. Oh, the, um, uh, well, the time machine. Yeah, it was, that was the, uh, that was to me the best version. There was another one done much later, which I didn't think measured up to the original at all. I think the original was, uh, George Powell, maybe, was it? No, it was Rod. Who's that, uh, actor? He had a TV, uh, started out, uh, with a cowboy show, Rod something. I can't, I can't even think of his name, and I know it's right there in my brain. Uh, yeah, it was Rod. Uh, you're right. Oh, no, George Palladman is being maybe the director or the producer of the movie. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you're right. I can't remember his last name either. Rod something, right? Oh, yeah. So, so much for time travel. We have to go back and refresh our memories. But you know what? I mean, it was so exciting how he could go forward and backwards. And, you know, it was, you know, he actually went forward where he saw well, the demise of mankind. And we're, t yeah, Rod Taylor. Thank you, James. I, one of my uh, fans just texted me there. Rod Taylor. Yeah, Rod Taylor. Yeah. R R he played that part so well. And that's what got me, you know, into time travel. Yeah, and at the time, I, I fell in love with Weena. I wanted to meet Weena. I used to watch every movie or show that had her in it after that. Do you remember Weena? Oh, yeah. You fell in love with her, too, yeah. huh? Yeah, the blonde and the pink dress, she was quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. And, and then all, all, what I liked how, you know, at one point the earth, whatever it did, maybe a nuclear war, and then it kind of rebounded. And then these creepy things that went underground that uh, were cannibals would basically raise these humans for uh, food. Oh, yeah. The Morlock versus the Eli. The Eli were the humans, and the Morlock were the um, ones that had degenerated into cannibalism. I was so fascinated with that movie that I even memorized some of the talking rings, what they said. I can actually even quote them right now. <laughs> so that tells you how important that movie was to me. Well, I'm going to call you out. Do one. I'll do part of one. Okay. The war between the war between the East and West, which is known as 326th year, has at last come to an end. There are a few of us left to fight and little left to fight with. The last surviving factory for the manufacture of oxygen has been destroyed. Stockpiles are rapidly diminishing. And when they are gone, we'll starve. <laughs> That's where the ring ended. Oh, wow. So, yeah. See, I told you. I have a, uh, that movie really impacted me all my life, actually, obviously. Well, it, it did with me. I mean, I saw the one that was made maybe about 10, 15 years ago. And to me, it, I, just, I couldn't even watch it because to me it didn't you know, held up to the original one at all. No, no. And even with uh, Jeremy Irons starring as the head of the Morlocks, it, uh, it it still didn't do it for me either. It was it okay. It was passable at best. It was passable. But uh, I, I didn't think it was a, a patch on the other one. And then they had, what, time travel on TV? And that, to me, uh, I couldn't, well, I don't know. It was done on a, you know, how it was in the, in the, the 60s uh, on a low budget uh, it was kind of exciting, but not as, uh, you know, I don't know. 
It started off well. It started off, I believe, with the Johnstown flood and the Titanic, and uh, it was the time tunnel. And then all of a sudden, uh, Irwin Allen seems to have done this with all his shows. They start off seriously, and then they get kind of stupid, and they use the cheapest special effects. He did it with Lost in Space, too. It started, if you watch the first few episodes, it's quite serious. And then it sort of degenerates into this kind of campy satire. And, and Time Tunnel did the same thing. It started off well, maybe for the first season, uh, maybe the first half of the first season, and then it slowly degenerated with all these sparks and flashes and people wearing gold lame uniforms and that sort of thing. But again, it was the 60s. Well, yeah, you know, I didn't even realize, too, one of the guests I have on a regular basis, uh, he wrote a whole bunch of books about, you know, Star Trek, I Spy, which was one of my favorite TV shows. But, you know, he was talking about the, the budgets they had. That when they were making these shows, you know, they weren't make, the studios weren't making, you know, the independent studios that did the filming wasn't making a lot of money. In a lot of cases, they didn't. And uh, a lot of people don't realize why Star Trek originally went off the air it was because the cost to produce the show. The network wanted it. But, you know, uh, Lucille Ball that owned uh, the uh, uh, studio that uh, originally did uh, like, uh, you know, uh, as you loop. Yeah, Desi Lu uh, Productions, they went bankrupt because the cost of doing Star Trek uh, just kind of broke them. But when the budget starts... $500,000 an episode, if I remember right. And even though the show had good ratings, even after the first several seasons, they just canned it because they just said it was simply too expensive an episode to produce. Yeah, And, and that's the problem with a lot of the shows. So they'll start out good. You know, the first, you know, couple episodes or the first season, and then they get their budgets cut. And then that's when I think they start getting corny. Well, see, they didn't cut the budget on um, Star Trek. And I don't think, do you, you don't think yeah, Star they Trek actually got did. corny? Did you? They actually did cut the budget drastically the last season. Did they? Yeah. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm aware of that. Yeah, I, well, I know that they had budget problems, and that's why it was canceled, even though it still had decent ratings, but... I thought for the time it was really well done. In fact, I had a friend at the time, and Time Tunnel and Star Trek came on the same season, I believe, and we had a bet as to which would be the better show, and he betted on uh, Time Tunnel, but history shows that Star Trek was the winner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, when's the last time you've seen Time uh, Tunnel on TV or cable channel? I haven't uh, seen it in years. I uh, saw a few episodes not far back uh, on streaming. I looked, you know, it's amazing what you can find on YouTube, for instance, as well. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, but I mean, there's so many of them at the time, Land of the Giants and all these different shows, you know, we sort of hopped from one sci-fi to another back then. Oh, yeah. That one, I, I hate to say it, the Land of the Giants, I could definitely never get into that one. That was a low budget show right from the beginning to the end. Yeah, I'm and sorry. I think that was, I'm not sure on this one, but I think it 